What's up, folks? Hey, welcome back to Three Pound Fishing and uh, Sickness right here. That's the name of the boat. And we're gonna be doing a walkthrough of the electronics and everything that's on this boat and why I did it. So if you're interested in that type of stuff, this is the episode for you. Um, very excited, I've been waiting for this episode for a while. And um, this is not the official walkthrough of the entire boat. This is just the electronic part of it and the rigging of the boat. So this is about electronics. We'll even talk a little bit about the power poles, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, this is exciting stuff because there's a lot of technology in this boat. I'd like to say it's definitely one of the most advanced boats out there. Whether or not it gets used to its full potential is another story, but regardless, I'm excited about sharing this with you. Again, I want to thank Basscat, SNS Marine, check them out, and everybody that made this happen. So stick with me. Here we go. It's gonna be an exciting episode, folks. This is this is something else. Here we go. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing, partnered up with these fantastic companies. All right, so let's just start off with the back. We're in the back right now. Got a 300. I went with a 300 because, plain and simple, I saw Ronnie Caps and Coleman uh, pass me up going about probably 75, 80, and it looked incredible. It was like they were floating across the water. So at the end of the day, you get one shot at this, doing a really great, at least in my book, one shot. This is the best bass that I'll probably ever own in my life. And I want the big boy, 300. Uh, will I ever use it to its full potential? I'm not sure, but it's nice having it. Uh, we're gonna start off with the power poles. People talk about, do you need power poles? Um, I'd say it's the one thing on your boat that you could get away with not having. Um, I don't use them all the time at all. I, in fact, I only use them when I'm scoping fish and I'm, if I'm in windy conditions. Um, and of course, if I'm in really shallow water. The one downside of a power pole, these are, these are the 10 footers, blades of course, is that even though they say 10 foot, really you can only use them in probably six or seven foot of water because otherwise you'll get pushed off your spot anyway because these guys have to go penetrate the mud and at, you know, you'll get pushed off your mark. So really six foot and shallower is really what I'm looking for. If I get to that seven foot number, I know that the water better be absolutely still for me to kind of use those. But I can tell you when you do use them, take it full it's just it's just awesome experience so now we're going to go right into the, the 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 power plant of this boat right so we're all talking about batteries nowadays i'm using amped outdoors they have definitely hooked me up with some great batteries um i did i did pay for them so don't even think for a second that i got them for free but i went with two 50 amp hour batteries 36 volts a piece that is powering the trolling motor so i don't need three batteries I'll show you those up close here shortly. But this is my, my Ultrax right here. It is the life and blood of this boat, right? So I don't have to worry about power now because I've got these two big boys in the boat. Let me show you those. All right, so those are the, the two batteries right there. Now, the downside of having it going 36 volts is that you will have to have a different charger. And there it is, right there. But at the end of the day, along with my noco charger which i have down there you can see the noco should be able to see it right there that's a four bank charger along with this guy i tie them together to a noco plug that allows it all just to come into one one plug so i still plug the boat in one time it charges the different styles of chargers that are on the boat for those batteries so those two lithium batteries are only powering that trolley motor and what am I powering for the electronics? That's always asked, right? So let's walk around. Let me show you again. I always say that this video is not for everybody. You've got to be interested in rigging and why you do stuff. Power is everything in terms of guiding. I do a lot of guiding. So having all the power in the world is important. Tournament fishing, absolutely. You fish eight hours longer than that sometimes in heavy winds. If you don't have to worry about your power, that's big time. So there, is a 100 hour amp battery right there. And that is just for electronics, just for electronics. What is that powering? It's powering two Solixes, a 12 inch and a 10 inch. It's also powering two live scope systems. Rarely will the live scopes be systems be working together at the same time, only during tournament times. But it's still important to have that much power to be able to do two live scopes, two Solixes. And as you know, Solixes are going to take a lot more power because they're touchscreen. And that 100 amp hour battery is going to do the trick for me. Now, the also important 
of course, discussion is placement of these graphs, right? So that's another big part of the decision-making process that we all come up our, upon. So I had a choice to either have this monitor here placed off to the side or have it flush mounted. And you know, I've always had them off to the side and they work great, but they're, they're certainly exposed. And so my thought process there was to streamline it, keep it up on the dash, out of your way, nothing blocking my view there. And I really like the idea of it being uh, flush mounted. Now what's the downside of that? And I thought about it, theft, people know it's there, they can take it. Um, it is mounted in there, it's not just sitting there flimsy. I mean, it would take a process to get to it, but um, I feel good about it and that's, you know, I'm gonna try it with this boat for sure. Now these other two, we talked about the cornfield crappie gear. You know, I've got the 16 here, the 10 here, and this is the, the 10 inch, I'm sorry, the 12 here, and then the 10 inch Solex right there. And I give you guys a view of it. I always say guys, I highly recommend the 126 SV. And by the way, electronic wise, I go through PTG, PTG, PTG. PTG. That's where you need to get those at when you guys, they have the, they have incredible deals down there in Grenada. So obviously all mounted on cornfield crappie gears mounts, which I think are outstanding. So let's talk about the, the layout. Okay. Um, here are the concerns, right? The number one concern is that because this guy's up, this trolling motor, I've already tested it, will not clear that. Guess how much it's missing it. Guess I could actually clear the 16 by guess how much? This much, literally that much. So I'm gonna try folding it down, bringing it up. I'm gonna try it with the trolley motor, doing it that way. It's an ex It's totally an extra step, which I'm not excited about, I have to admit, but I'm gonna try it. And if it doesn't work for me, I'm just gonna offset that monitor, the one inch I need, so I can use the 8616. Now the easy solution is just to put the 12 inch up and it will work fine. It'll slide right by it, no big deal. Uh, but I want the 16. And I think just moving it one inch up here, this bracket right here, I'll just have it move, shift it over two inches and that'll solve the problem. So another thing to consider is foot pedals. I'm obviously a big fan of the Ultrax. This is the best foot pedal on the market, folks. I don't care who you are. People that have tried them both usually come up with that conclusion, but either way, they're all great trolley motors. And if you're choosing between the Force, uh, I forgot even the, the Ghost and the Ultrax, you're in a fortunate group anyway. But I, the point is, is that I like the, the foot pedal recessed. I really do like it recessed. Um, it fits my everything better. I don't feel like I'm, I'm stepping up to a foot pedal. So if you have the option, I think that's fantastic. We've already talked about this. I'm not gonna go over it, but I went ahead and added two two pedestals right there and oh by the way guys by the time you're seeing this video these are going to be out on monday and they're already out pro staff are already getting them um, certain people are getting them you can actually go on and order pre-sale they will sell out i can tell you right now they will sell out and um i can tell you that i've been using the optimizer optimized and uh you're going to see a lot of that at, at Grenada, but either way, awesome braids, 20 pound, 15 pound, check them out, snipingbraid.com, or even go to my website. I got them on my website. Now back to the console. We do have a radio. I wanted the radio option in the boat, which I know is not important, but I think it is if you're out there a long time, I like radio. And then one power, uh, power pull up and down button. I also have the stomp pads up there as well. I don't know if you guys saw that earlier, but I think that's super advantage to be able to go up there and adjust them. I don't like, I don't like anything in my hands other than a fishing rod. So I don't do key fobs, I don't do any of that stuff. It's important to learn how you use your trolley motor um, so that you don't have to use a, a one of those deals, key fobs that go around your neck. And certainly with power poles, heck, you could have a thousand of those things on your neck. And um, so use your foot pedal, it's, it's important. What else we got in this fancy boat? We need to talk about. You know, I got the jack plate. I've never had a jack plate before. I don't know what to expect with that, to be honest with you. I mean, that just tells you I'm not new to I'm I'm new to these big fancy boats, so I don't know what the purpose of that is other than probably probably go faster, better ride. So, 
I, I'm sure I'll fig figure it out. This guy right here, people say that it's critical because you get to keep both your hands on the wheel. Don't have to wor worry about messing with the throttle. So I'm excited about trying that. Hot foot, I think it's called, a hot foot, a hot foot. And uh, anyway, that's the walkthrough of the electronics that I went with. I went with Solix because it's uh, the, gr the pixels are better than the Helix, apparently. It's got a better image. It's no different than wanting to have the 86, 16, or 12 because that picture, or that 126 SV, that picture is better than a 1222 or a 1022 in Garmin respects. So I wanted the best picture I could possibly get. And I don't know if I'm missing anything. I can tell you filling the gas thing up. We filled this thing up with gas in Kentucky, and I can't even tell you how much it cost to fill this thing up. It was amazing. Um, but what else we got here on this boat that I had a choice on? That's it, folks. That's the electronics on, on uh, sickness. You're about the next, the next video we are going to do is uh, we'll probably do something on sniping braid, but at the end of the day, the next one will be us on the water for the first time. This boat has not been in the water. It's been in my garage. It probably won't be in the water for another five or six days even. Um, as anxious as I am to get it on the water, when I do it, I want to make sure that it's the right time, that I can go out there and do the right things and really experience the boat. I could put the boat in right now and go out for a half an hour, um, but that to me, it's a lot of effort for just a short period of uh, you know spinning around in it. So um, at the meantime, I love walking around and exploring it and messing with electronics. I did transfer my waypoints. I know I'm talking a lot, but I did transfer my waypoints from the Helix to Solix. That was very easy. And um, I don't use the Garmin for, for waypoints. So it's strictly there just for live scope, basically. So I don't know, folks. That's it. Sickness, I'm telling you. This bad boy is going to be out there. Better get carpet graphics. Obviously, you see those guys there. They're getting ready. There's a couple more that are going to go on the boat. Um, will I wrap the boat? Not right away, but I'm sure eventually it will happen. But uh, beautiful boat. Love it. Bass Cat, SNS Marine. Thank you. And uh, till next time, folks, here we go. Thanks for watching 3 Pound Fishing. Partnered up with these fantastic companies.